Well, I'm, I've I've heard a couple of reports of some law, uh, local law enforcement agencies, not local here, but I just mean as opposed to state or otherwise, but some local agencies picking up some of this fluted solid stuff versus a gold dot or an HST. Um, it just it, it baffles me. But so we tested fluted handgun ammunition back in the late 80s, early 90s for what became the Mark 23 program. Mm -hmm. The stuff is not new. Yeah. And it's not necessarily bad. No. But it's not new. And it's certainly not magic. Um, you have a solid projectile with more surface area. And usually they make the projectiles lighter weight. So you have more surface area, you have less weight, so it's going to penetrate less than a standard FMJ. Yep. yep. Okay, great. So, so it works great in, a, in, in, in an area where you can't carry a full metal jacket. That's awesome. Yeah. Or not full metal jacket, uh, hollow points. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it works better than, possibly than a full metal jacket if you need to have optimal penetration depth yep. and they put that dialed in. Basically, every handgun in a duty caliber is poking a hole in tissue. Yep. It's not liquefying it. It's not exploding it. It's not creating neural shock, hydrostatic shock, or it's poking a hole. Yeah. If you have a projectile with a larger diameter, you're going to poke a bigger hole. If you have more surface area, you're going to have more drag. So the projectile is going to penetrate a little less. If you have a really smooth projectile, it's going to penetrate a little bit more with a little less uh, tissue damage. If you have a wad cutter with a sharp leading edge, you're going to poke a more cookie cutter type hole. Versus I mean, a round rounded nose. Versus that a rounded pushes nose through. That push through and push tissue to the side yep. without causing a cut. Yeah. That is so severe. That is none truly this, poking a hole. Yeah. Then none of this is rocket science, folks, right? Yeah. This is basic physiology and anatomy. And it's so disappointing because if you stop and think about it, everything you said makes complete sense. But also you can back this all up. Yet we have people that are they they have the wool pulled over their eyes with all this advertising and all these magic bullets and magic beans and I don't I, I don't know Chuck if you if you're still dealing with people like that but on occasion I do and it's just constantly. so tiresome it's so uh, tiresome constantly on the internet uh, quite a bit in the civilian world and then uh, you know even in the police world we had a local. We have a local agency, uh, small agency here in Kansas that uh, bought off on uh, the Fort Scott munitions. It's a Tumbles. solid copper bullet. It's a solid copper bullet. It's designed to tumble upon impact, T-U-I bullets. Yep. And they're selling them as better than jacket of hollow points. Now, one of the things they run around telling people is, well, you know, the military uses bullets that tumble. So that's that's how you know they're better. Uh, in completely ignoring that bullets at yaw, uh, that just happens to be an artifact of physics when you use a Spitzer bullet. It's not because it was a design feature that they went after. And it's just a happy accident that things like M193 ball will yaw and then typically fragment to really do a lot of good for us. Um, but they don't, they, they were using it because they want to abide by the Hague Accords and laws of land warfare, not because it was better than jagged hollow points or anything like that. Uh, so what they're selling people is very, very high priced ball ammunition. You know, you can, you can get, uh, there's quite a few loads out there. Uh, 115 grain spear lawman I've, I've seen in ballistic jail, very reliably yaws. Uh, so, you know, the, the people, the, there's a lot of charlatans out there, the, the light for caliber, fast fragmenting bullets, the, the magic fluted bullets that are supposedly, they're not necessarily bad bullets, but, uh, the, the advertising them as better than jacket of hollow points is, is a lie, uh, bullets that tumble versus bullets that expand, uh, and, and things like that. And all of this is that there's magic bullets that are supposed to be better than what we've already got going on is all an attempt to make a buck. Now the fluted bullets, I think, and Gary can correct me if I'm wrong. I think they're kind of a, that they're a pseudo version of a modern semi wad cutter. They can be useful in certain calibers like 380, you know, 380. where yeah. expanding bullets, uh, 
my analogy would be if you know your 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 Elmer Keith. So he went with heavy hard cast lead semi wad cutters. Why? Because he wanted a wide flat meplat that cut, and he wanted the bullet to penetrate a lot. And he'd wanted this because he dealt with big animals, elk, bear, moose, things like that. So if we take that idea of that flat nose, a cutting meplat, and a bullet that penetrates, if we shrink the target then we and we shrink the bullet, so now instead of bears or elk with a 45 or 44, we're using 380 as a defensive round. Well, those attributes you want out of that bullet that Keith was looking for still apply. They still apply. So if I had a defensive 380, I'm shooting, I got a little bullet shooting at a big target, you know, uh, maybe a big aggressive man. Uh, that would be analogous to shooting at a large, you know, a black bear or, or grizzly bear or something with a 44, 45. I would want those same attributes at that cutting meplat and sufficient penetration to get the job done. So in that regard, like in a 380, things like that makes a lot of sense. That's why a lot of us advocate wad cutters in like 32 HNR mag, 38 special and snub noses, that sort of thing. Um, so the bullets aren't necessarily bad, but they're they're hyped and there's a lot of false advertising. Uh, the bullets that are bad are you know, things that are high priced full metal jacket that is sold as being better than everything else or the light for caliber, really uber fast fragmenting bullets that have very, very limited penetration. Those are horrible. Uh, we, we have documented cases of bullets like that getting good people hurt. Correct. That would be the worst option. I, uh, I've uh, witnessed firsthand what one of, what was it? A Lehigh extreme penetrator will do to a human skull and then five additional walls on the other side of that skull. Nice, clean holes. It killed the guy, but it also practically was in the neighbor's house. But then any solid bullet will do that. Yeah. And any hollow point that plugs will do that. Yeah. There's a reason why 5.56 five, tends to work better for indoor shooting than anything else. Certainly better than a handgun. Yeah. Fragmentation. Deflection, lightweight, easily yeah. upset. Ooh, upset. I like that. That's the technical term. The bullet upsets in tissue. That's cool. But it doesn't. If it doesn't, it goes straight through. If it does upset, it yaws. It may deform. It may yaw, hyperexpand, and then fragment. For a bullet to fragment, it flattens, which means it hyperexpands. Okay. And when it hyper expands and defeats the tensile strength of the construction, it will then shatter. Mm 